Hi, I'm Vinay Upal and I'm back for season 2. This is the third episode of the Pathfinder series and here I've brought to you a question from the electromagnetic induction chapter, build up your understanding question number 16. So let's first read the question. A uniform dielectric hollow cylinder of mass m radius r length l carrying uniform charge of surface charge density sigma can rotate without friction about a horizontal axle that coincides with the axis of the cylinder. So there, there is a cylinder here, hollow cylinder on which you have charge distributed uniformly and it can rotate about the horizontal axis. Now, uh, several turns of a thin light uh, insulating cord are wrapped on the cylinder and a block of mass M is suspended from the free end of the cord. So I have a cord here, basically a string, and since it's insulating and it's wrapped around the cylinder and you have a block attached to the other end. Now initially the block is held at rest and find the acceleration of the block after it is released. So that is the question here. So here I need to find the acceleration of the block. If I can get the angular acceleration of the cylinder, the acceleration of the block is simply going to be alpha times r. So in order to get this angular acceleration of the hollow cylinder, I'm going to use my game changer shortcut. If you are not aware of that game changer shortcut, if you're not aware of, if you haven't checked out my website, go right now to this website, vinayopal.com, enroll for the free trial lectures and watch those lectures i can assure you it's going to be worth your time for more details about this game changer course you can you, i have put in the links in the description do check that out all right let's uh, let's see how we can solve this question so first off i have a cylinder we can assume it to be a long cylinder which is rotating at some instant with let's say omega and its angular acceleration is let's say alpha at some particular instant and you have let's say charge q distributed on its entire length so the length is l uh, radius is r i can simply write charge q as the surface charge density sigma times the surface area 2 pi r l now the current associated with this charge would be q omega by 2 pi this is basically something that i am hoping that uh, you would have learned in current electricity a very basic concept concept about the current associated with charge if you're not aware of this relation for the current associated with the moving charge please let me know in the comment section so i can help you out with this now you should be able to re recognize that this hollow cylinder rotating the charges are all performing circular motion this situation is exactly like a solenoid. So we are going to assume a long cylinder here. So a long solenoid and a long solenoid has a magnetic field of mu naught n i. Again, a very standard formula that you should know from a basic study of magnetism. Here, what is n? n is the number of turns per unit length. So if I say, let's say n is the total number of turns in the solenoid. I can write it as I can write small n number of turns per unit length as the total number of turns divided by the length of the solenoid. If you look at the numerator here, n into i, what is that? That is simply the summation of the current in each turn of the solenoid. So it's like the, the, like the sum of all the currents in all of the wires. Each turn is carrying current i. Here i is a current in one turn. But the current that we have gotten associated with the charge, that is the total current distributed on the entire surface of the cylinder. And therefore, I can simply write the magnetic field in my hollow cylinder should be equal to the numerator ni in the solenoid will simply get replaced by q omega by 2 pi, which is the total current distributed on the surface of the cylinder divided by the length. So uh, we have used the equivalence between this rotating hollow cylinder and the solenoid in order to write down the field here. Alright, and then I can simply substitute uh, the charge sigma 2 pi rl So this will be the magnetic field inside the hollow cylinder. It's a uniform magnetic field just like in the case of a long solenoid. So if I look at my original diagram of the question, my magnetic field lines would all be inwards when you have a clockwise rotating uh, cylinder and the value of the magnetic field is given by mu naught sigma omega r all right now let's solve the question now that we know the magnetic field uh, inside this hollow cylinder let me just write down that magnetic field 
we got that as mu naught sigma omega r now this magnetic field is a varying magnetic field time varying magnetic field because omega here is a varying now because magnetic field is changing with time we know what that does that means that there will be a non conservative electric field generated so another very basic concept that if you have a magnetic field changing with time in a circular region or a cylindrical region i'll have an electric field generated uh, and the value of the electric field i can just write down faraday's law so at a distance r i can draw these electric field lines which will be circular so e into 2 pi r is the emf should be equal to the rate of change of flux so this is a very standard expression for the uh, non conservative electric field okay so what will be the electric field generated here that will be r by 2 so r here would be capital r i'm writing the electric field on the uh, charge so that will be uh, capital r by 2 mu not sigma r now the derivative of magnetic field would basically be uh, the derivative of omega which is the angular acceleration so i basically have mu not sigma r square by 2 times alpha so my electric field here is proportional to the angular acceleration and because the magnetic field is increasing uh, in the inward direction my electric field by lenz's law or even by faraday's law electric field will be induced in the anti clockwise sense so now let's write down the final equation i have this block of mass small m this hollow cylinder is capital m this radius is r now this is where the magic happens i'm going to stick the block on to the circumference of the cylinder this is exactly what i showed you in the game changer shortcut lecture you can check it out on vinayopal.com once again now that i stick this mass here i have eliminated the need to write any expression for the tension in the string so that variable is gone so what are the forces acting here i have gravity uh, the hinge the axis of rotation is basically at the uh, center of the circle or the uh, coinciding with the axis of the cylinder so the gravity of the cylinder itself will not have any torque the other torque is because of the electric field lines so the electric field lines are in the anti clockwise sense so i'll have an anti clockwise sense uh, torque so my net torque about the uh, axis would be mg times r by the gravity of the block minus qer so qer is the torque by this non conservative electric field on the charge distributed in the cylinder should be equal to i alpha so for the cylinder i'll have capital mr squared about its axis plus don't forget that you have to include the moment of inertia of this particle which is representative of the block so the particles at a distance of capital r so that'll be m into r squared times alpha all right so just substitute electric field here also substitute uh, the value of for the charge that we had got on what was the value that was sigma into 2 pi r l substitute that here and you will get your angular acceleration it's a very straightforward equation and the acceleration of the block would simply be alpha r so i'll write that down you should get that mg divided by m plus m plus pi mu not sigma square r square l so this will be the acceleration of the block so i hope you understood how we use the game changer shortcut method in electromagnetic induction in this question and we eliminated the need to solve for tension we eliminated the need to solve simultaneous equations and that's it for today see you at the top good night